This is Mona Eltahawi. Now, just from looking at her, you can tell she's one of those real stereotypical SJWs, complete with the luminous hair and thick glasses. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you have never heard of her before. I hadn't actually heard of her either until just a couple of weeks ago when this particular video went viral. Fuck the patriarchy. Fuck Donald Trump. Fuck Mike Pence. Fuck white supremacy. Fuck racism. Fuck misogyny. Fuck homophobia. Fuck transphobia. Fuck capitalism. Fuck classism. Fuck transphobia. Fuck ableism. Fuck Islamophobia. Fuck anti-Semitism. Fuck every kind of bigotry out there. So yeah, as you can see, she is so woke. I mean, she's so woke, she even mentions transphobia twice. So, you know, props for her, but she is the model of intersectionality. She's someone who would always fight racism, always fight sexism, always fight homophobia, transphobia. She would never attack anyone based on any of those criteria, apart from if they're a conservative. A couple of weeks ago, this is what she had to say about Rita Panahi, who is an Australian conservative commentator, saying, saying, I am curious, is Rita Panahi a woman of colour? Fuck, it is especially ugly when women of colour are bootlickers of white supremacy and patriarchy. Are you proud, Rita? I mean, that's interesting, right? A, a, a woke, intersectional anti-racist activist calling a woman of colour a tool of white supremacy for daring to disagree with her on a subject. One would think that an anti-racist campaigner would not use a ethnic minority's race against them in a comment like that. Now, she was called out for this, but was Mona's behaviour something which is particularly unique to her, or is this a symptom of a wider problem. Well, Rita Panahi is not the only conservative who has been attacked on the basis of their race. For example, we have Diamond and Silk, both black women who are Trump supporters, being labelled bootlickers by a white person. And conservative chairman James Cleverly is being called a coconut by a white person. You're seeing that there might be a little bit of a trend here. But Dominique Samuels was labelled a white persona in blackface for supporting Brexit and conservatism. Although we don't have a picture of the person, so we can't presume their race, it's still an insult on a conservative woman simply because of her race. And this doesn't just affect black people, as I mentioned with Rita earlier, she was targeted despite being Asian, and here is an Asian conservative activist being told, you're brown, how can you be a conservative from a Labour supporter of all people? You know, Labour, the party of tolerance, supposedly. Not those nasty Tories who are so, so racist, but Labour, the party of love. But... All of these insults are specifically about race, but all of them are coming from the left. Now, I've talked a lot about the insults which I have encountered being a trans commentator and talking about the kind of issues that I do. And certainly I've had a lot of trans activists from the left label me as true scum, turf, bigot, fascist, bootlicker, the list goes on. But it's interesting to note that it isn't just trans activists who have labelled me in such ways. In fact, I've encountered many cis people who have said similar things to me. And I'm a trans woman, but I've been told to shut up on a number of occasions and I've got to listen to a particular line. And it's also important to note that this doesn't just happen to trans people either, but the wider LGB community. Munro Bergdorf famously labelled gay Tories as a special kind of dickhead years ago. And here's young conservative activist Darren Grimes being called a faggotory. They are far from the only examples. I mean, hell, look at the walk away movement, predominantly LGBT, who can't seem to hold an event anywhere because they're being consistently targeted by well, woke progressive activists who then start screaming at them if they are there to speak their minds. <laughs> and 
And then, of course, there are women who aren't necessarily a minority group, so to speak. I mean, women make up more than half of the population of the planet. And not all of those are self-ID'd as women either. They are biological women. And despite that, though, for the purposes of intersectionality, they are considered a minority. Now, if you followed my channel, you're no doubt aware of the turf wars with lots of radical feminists who speak out against trans ideology, some of them because of genuine concerns, others with a bit more of a hate to trans people. But regardless, all of them are labelled as TERFs, trans exclusionary radical feminists, for those of you who don't know. Now, the term itself is said by the people who use it to not really refer to any specific sex. And how people like Graham Linehan, Donald Trump and Boris Johnson have all been labelled as TERFs. And it's strange that Trump would be called a radical feminist, but whatever, apparently that's what it means. But it is mostly used against women. It's almost undeniable at this point. Think in your mind what a TERF looks like. And you're probably picturing someone like well, one of these people. So I, I can see where they're coming from when they say that these are words specifically used to attack women. But the Rad Femmes would say to you that it is an, at heart a misogynistic slur and it is an attack on all women. In the same way that if you can think of words like, well, I don't want to say anything that's going to get my channel properly demonetized, even though I probably already have, but you, you know what I mean. I, I would, however, say that they are only halfway there. I, I don't, whilst the word turf is certainly used against women, it's not used against all women. And rad fans do kind of fall into the trap of thinking that, well, they also speak for all women in the same way progressive activists like Mona would say that she speaks for all women. But rather, it's used against women who hold a particular viewpoint, the wrong viewpoint by the progressives. The idea that a woman has to be a specific thing and not something you can just self-ID into. So you can make an argument that the term itself is an attack purely on the basis that they are a woman. Now, we are used to hearing about right-wing prejudice. I mean, it's pretty easy to spot. It doesn't really hide itself that well, but... When it comes to prejudice from the left, I don't even think it's that invisible, but they seem to ignore it and in fact actually embrace their own viewpoints on this. Whether you're a black person who's being called a coconut or a kinder egg or a trans person who's called a true scum or a woman who's being called a turf or a gay person who has all sorts of homophobic slurs thrown at them or all of these groups being called bootlickers, all of these insults are often used by the side in the political debate that tells you they are incapable of having any kind of prejudice at all. So why do they think they can get away with this? Well, the left-wing movements will often say to you that they were the ones who promoted the rights for minorities in the West, and they were the ones that generally won. Now, you know, if you ignore a lot of the socialist governments, like the Soviet Union and Mao's China, because, you know, they were never real socialism anyway, they might have a bit of a point there. And they will often look at the historical nature of the likes of the Conservatives with Section 28 saying that is an example of homophobia, that is a homophobic party and it cannot change. They will ignore that the Conservatives were the ones who bought in same-sex marriage. They will often bring up Boris Johnson's comments about gay people from the late 90s, but they will ignore the part of him getting involved in London Pride back when he first started out as mayor, or the fact that his views have even evolved since. They'll brush all of that aside and say to you, no, that party hates you for who you are. You need to come to us. We were the ones who gave you those rights after all. And is it just me or does this feel like they want to effectively trade your rights for your vote? So we will give you the right to change your birth certificate as a trans woman. We will give you the right to not lose your job as a gay man. We will give you the right to be treated like anyone else in society as a black person. But you've got to vote for us in return. That's the way this a lot of this really feels to me. And I know that a lot of people are going to be thinking, that can't be true. 
Like, there is no way that people are going to be that kind of blatant. But if you want a great example of this, just take a look at the recent Labour debacle with anti-Semitism. Now, I know that I've mentioned this before, but I think this is worth saying. When the Jewish Board of Deputies put out their 10 requests for the Labour Party leadership candidates to fight against anti-Semitism, a couple of Labour activists decided that they wanted to put their own demands to the Board of Deputies, and a lot of these were about condemning Israel, completely oblivious to the fact that telling Jews to condemn Israel and thinking that's fine is like telling a random Muslim to condemn ISIS for no reason at all, as though they, they both have something to do with the wider community, rather than them being individuals. But this ended with a weird point about how they should disassociate themselves from the Conservative Party. Now, it shouldn't matter whether these Jewish men and women are voting Conservative. What should matter is their concerns first and foremost. They are perfectly free to hold whatever kind of political beliefs that they want. And in fact, this is a really important part of actually fighting for the rights of people, the rights of every man, woman and child to be who they are. Because we're not drones, none of us are robots and we can't just follow what the crowd says. If you're only going to take the thoughts of a group seriously, if they give you the right votes, if they give you the right thoughts, then you're not fighting against racism, you're not fighting against sexism, you're not fighting against homophobia, transphobia, biphobia, everything. None of this should ever come with a caveat. And when you hear rhetoric like this, it just seems to give a bit more credence to the idea that all these minority groups are just going to go in line and toe the line against what the party says that they ought to do. And then you end up with the weird echo chambers, like the queer community, where everyone just so happens to be left wing. Everyone just so happens to be for the same economic model. Despite the fact that they are a variety of different genders and sexualities, it's funny that they all just so happen to think the same way. And then when you get people from these groups who just so happen to start thinking for themselves, and when they think for themselves, they just so happen to lean to the right, all of a sudden, it's a big, amazing surprise. Wow, we have this black woman who's a conservative. Wow, this trans woman is leaning to the right. None of these things should really be amazing. But because of this weird idea that these left-wing groups own the rights of a minority to be able to actually go out there and do what you want and that you have to swap that for your rights, it makes it seem like it's an amazing thing when people actually start speaking their minds. And it's a big concern when you see these kinds of groups throwing insults at minorities on the basis that we should all be following what they say, that we are bootlickers. And if we are bootlickers for daring to think about stuff freely, then how are you for our rights? How do you support us if the support that you give us comes at a cost? I'm not saying that everything on the right is perfect, and I'm not saying everything on the left is bad. There are plenty of people on the left who certainly think for themselves. But what I'm talking about is this weird group thought on the left that barely goes challenged within their own circles. They seem to think it's fine to throw abuse at people. I mean, hell, you get white anti-racists calling black people coconuts. How is that okay? How is that in any frame of mind okay? You'll often hear socialists talking about that they could not possibly be racist or prejudiced on them on their own. But they're certainly capable of it. I mean, hell, you want more evidence? Look at the way in which a lot of the left have treated Brexit supporters. I mean, they will call the Brexit celebrations like knuckle-dragging acts of idiocy. But a lot of this doesn't come across as their love. For minority groups. A lot of this doesn't come across as their respect for us. It really kind of feels almost like it's a tool for something else. In his book, The Road to Wigan Pier, George Orwell famously said, the truth is that to many people calling themselves socialists, revolution does not mean a movement of the masses with which they hope to associate themselves. It means a set of reforms which we, the clever ones, are going to impose on them, the lower orders. 
On the other hand, it would be a mistake to regard the buck-trained socialist as a bloodless creature entirely incapable of emotion, though seldom giving much evidence of affection for the exploited. He is perfectly capable of displaying hatred, a sort of queer, theoretical, infatuate hatred against the exploiters. It's often assumed that all, by saying that Orwell meant that the socialist doesn't love the poor, they hate the rich. And I can't help but feel that that term can be used in the current situation that we're in now, when you have minority groups being targeted by people on the left, whether they are Jewish, whether they are black, whether they are trans, gay, women, whatever, that we break away from the thoughts and so therefore their love for us seemingly ends. It feels like to get our support is nothing more than a tool. And this is a big problem. This treats us as though we aren't actually people. And this doesn't look as though they have any love for us at all. We are all independent individuals. This kind of prejudice in our political sphere should not be happening. And it is simply unreasonable to throw insults aimed at race, aimed at gender, aimed at sex, aimed at sexuality, and then hide behind a shield of wokeness. Or else you're no better than the fascists you pretend to hate so much. What do you think of this video? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoy my content, you can support me on Patreon and Subscribestar. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you once again, and I'll see you all next time. And a special thanks to Alex Meadows, Casey Adolfson, Dan Norman, Finello Cooney, Holly Mahone, James C. George, Janine Caron, Jess, Joanne Woolley, Kim Vandry, Latin Creature, Liz Udesu, Moy Felicita, Ricardo Jose, Steve Hendricks, Stephen, Tennessee Barfly, The Poor of Rizzo, Tranime Girl, Stefan Hansen, James UK, Leisha, and the rest of my supporters on Patreon and Subscribestar.